This video will cover the anatomical positions and directional terms associated with the human body. Now, the anatomical directional terms are like the directions on a compass. Like the directions north, south, east, and west, they can be used to describe the location of structures in relation to other structures located in the body. And this is particularly useful when studying human anatomy as it provides a common method of communication that will help us to avoid confusion when we identify various structures. And so we will be going over anatomical positions, directional terms, and we will add the uh, body planes to this. And understanding the uh, anatomical directional terms and body planes will make it easier to study anatomy. So again, the purpose of uh, the anatomical directions is to help you visualize positions and spatial locations of structures and then to navigate directionally from one area to another on the human body. We will begin with the anatomical position. Now if you will um, look at the diagram, you'll notice that the uh, body is erect, the feet are slightly apart, the palms are facing forward, and the thumbs are pointed away from the body. And this will be the correct anatomical position as we begin looking through the various directional terms. Now just like on a compass, each directional term will have a counterpart with an opposite meaning. And these terms are very useful when describing the location of structures to be studied during dissections. We will begin with superior. Now superior means towards the head, so we can see that this is the superior area. Inferior means away from the head, so here we would see the inferior area. And when we deal with directional terms, we have to give the directional term in relation to an object. For example, if you were giving directions in driving, you would not say turn right. You would say turn right at the second red light. So we have to give this in relation to uh, a specific structure. For example, the head is superior to the abdomen. The head is above the abdomen. Where the navel or the belly button is inferior to the chin. So we see that the belly button is below the chin. And so we will see these in regard to another uh, structure. Anterior means toward the front of the body. So here we would have the, uh, the breastbone or the sternum is anterior to the spinal cord, which is in the back. Posterior means away from the, uh, the body or behind. So the heart is posterior or behind the breastbone or sternum. Now we can also use ventral and dorsal uh, for these terms as well. So we could say that the sternum is uh, ventral to the spinal cord. And again, ventral means belly side. We could say that the uh, heart is dorsal to the sternum, meaning it is behind it. And dorsal means backside. Medial means towards the midline. So the heart is medial to the arms. It's in the middle of the arms. Lateral means away from the midline. So the arms are lateral to the chest or to the heart. They are to the outside. Intermediate means between. So the collarbone is intermediate to the breastbone and the shoulders, meaning it is in between. Proximal and distal are the two that are the most difficult for students to understand. And I'm going to explain these here and then I'm going to go back over proximal and distal on a, um, a slide a little bit later on. Proximal means closest to the point of attachment and in the human body the point of attachment is the trunk. Now when we work with proximal and distal we are usually talking about the extremities so we are working with the arms and the legs and again the trunk which would be the shoulder or the hips would be the point of attachment. So proximal means closest to the point of attachment, distal means further from the point of attachment. We'll go over some examples of each of these in just a moment. Superficial means towards the surface. The skin is superficial 
to the skeletal system or the bones. It means it's towards the surface. The bones would be deeper in. Deep means away from the surface. So the lungs would be deep to the skin. The lungs are deeper inside. The skin is more superficial or more to the outside. Now, I have drawn out a little area here, like a, a classroom with the teacher and then four students, to help describe proximal and distal. Now, proximal means closest to the point of attachment, while distal means further from the point of attachment. Let's say the point of attachment is the teacher. We would say that Tom is proximal to Jane, meaning Tom is closer to the teacher than Jane. Jane is distal to Tom. Jane is further from the teacher than Tom is. Jane is proximal to Bob. Jane is closer to the teacher than Bob. Bob is distal to Jane. Bob is further from the teacher than Jane. So when we look at Jane, she can be proximal or closer to the teacher if we're talking about Jane and Bob, but Jane would be distal to the teacher if we're talking about Jane's location versus Tom's. And that's how we use proximal and distal on the body. Now let's apply this to an actual anatomical structure on the body. So you will notice I circled our point of attachment. I've indicated the elbow, the wrist, and the fingers. The elbow is proximal to the wrist. The elbow is closer to the point of attachment than the wrist. The wrist is distal to the elbow. The wrist is further from our uh, point of attachment than the elbow. The wrist is proximal to the fingers. The wrist is closer to the point of attachment than the fingers. The fingers are distal to the wrist. The fingers are further from the point of attachment than the wrist. And so that's how we use proximal and distal. Also, I want you to realize that you're using the models right and left and not your own. So as we look at this model right here, this would be the model's right side. This would be the model's left side. So always remember to use the models right and left and not your own and review over proximal and distal and any of the other directional terms that we've covered. Make sure you have a strong understanding before you move on. Now with regard to the body planes, imagine that a person is standing in an upright position. Now imagine that you are dissecting this person with imaginary vertical up and down and horizontal or right to left planes. This is the best way to describe the anatomical planes. Anatomical planes can be used to describe any body part or the entire body. So let's uh, review over these. The first one we will look at is the sagittal. Now sagittal can also be known as the lateral plane and this one is one that is perpendicular to the ground. So imagine a vertical plane that runs through your body from the front to the back or from the back to the front. This plane divides the body into a right and a left. Now if the plane divides the body into an equal right and left, we call this a mid-sagittal cut. A frontal plane is also known as a coronal plane, and this divides the body into an anterior and a posterior, or a front and a back. So it divides the body into the front and the back regions. A transverse is also known as a horizontal or a cross section, and this is a plane that divides the body into a superior and an inferior, or an upper and a lower region. So here we have our sagittal. Notice that we have the plane cutting right down the body and it's dividing the body into a right and left sides. If it's an equal right and left, we call this a mid-sagittal cut. Here we have a frontal cut. You'll notice that it's cutting down the body and it's cutting it into a front and a back or an anterior and a posterior. Here's our transverse. 
you'll notice it's cutting through the body it's separating it into an anterior a superior and an inferior section so before we move on uh, here's one more diagram just showing all three of the uh, directional body planes that you'll run across in a typical anatomy class and just remember that the anatomical planes um, can be used to help describe a body part or an entire body system and uh, it is used for helping to locate various structures or directions of movement within the human body. Now I do want to point one thing out before we move on and that's that uh, anatomical terms can vary depending on whether you're dealing with a bipedal or a quadrupedal organism so if you are in an anatomy class you will be using the previous slide uh, for your directional terms. However, if you are in a biology class, you would use uh, this diagram relating to the um, body planes and the directional terms. And there are slight differences that you will see between a, uh, an individual that walks on two legs versus an individual that walks on four legs. Most notably, you will notice that the uh, anterior and the posterior of a uh, dog will be different than the anterior and posterior that would be on a human. On a human, the anterior would be the same as ventral, the posterior would be the same as dorsal. However, on a dog or on a quadruped, anterior will be towards the head, posterior will be towards the tushy. Now, as we begin to review over the body cavities of the human body, uh, one of the things we'll see is that in most cases the body is described as having two main body cavities and that will be the dorsal body cavity which is all of this highlighted in yellow and the ventral body cavity which is all of this that's highlighted in red. Now, some anatomical references do not recognize dorsal body cavities uh, and so we can subdivide this down. As far as the dorsal body cavity is concerned, it protects organs of the nervous system. Um, it can be subdivided into the cranial cavity, which contains the brain, and the vertebral cavity, which contains the uh, spinal cord and the vertebrae. The ventral body cavity, like the dorsal cavity, has two subdivisions. It can be subdivided into the thoracic cavity. The thoracic cavity is surrounded by the ribs and muscles in the chest, and it contains the heart and lungs. And then we can have the abdominal pelvic cavity. Now the abdominal pelvic cavity uh, is inferior to the diaphragm, and it contains both all of the... Uh, abdominal um, organs such as the pancreas, the stomach, intestines, etc., as, along with the reproductive and uh, the bladder. We can take the abdominal pelvic and subdivide that down into the abdominal cavity, which will just contain the digestive structures, and the pelvic cavity, which contains the bladder and the reproductive organs along with the rectum. And so we can take each of these areas, subdivide them down, and we can see and identify what organs should be present in each of these various cavities. Here we have one additional view of the body cavities. Again, the dorsal body cavity protects the organs of the nervous system and has two subdivisions. The cranial cavity, which is the area within the skull. It encloses the brain and the spinal cavity, which encases the vertebral column and the spinal cord. Like the dorsal cavity, the ventral cavity down here in red, it has two subdivisions. The superior division is the thoracic cavity, and that is above the diaphragm. The thoracic cavity is surrounded by the ribs and the muscles. The thoracic cavity can be further subdivided into the pleural cavity, which covers the lungs and the um, pericardial cavity, which lies um, around and encloses the heart. The inferior section, which is below the diaphragm, 
is the abdominal pelvic cavity. And uh, the abdominal pelvic cavity can be subdivided into su two subdivisions. The abdominal cavity, which contains the stomach, spleen, liver, intestines, and a few other organs. And the pelvic cavity, which contains the urinary bladder, the rectum, and some of the reproductive organs. Now, because the abdominal pelvic region is so large, the abdominal pelvic cavity is separated into regions and quadrants. And the quadrants are fairly self-explanatory. And what we look at is as we have this quadrant formed, right here, the belly button will be where the two lines meet. And we will have the uh, right upper quadrant, the left upper quadrant, the right lower quadrant, and the left lower quadrant. And as we see this, we can see what organs are found within each of these quadrants. So if an individual is examined and we see a tenderness in one of these quadrants, then we could estimate, uh, before doing further tests, what are some possible organs that could be affected. Just like we had the uh, four body quadrants, we also have the nine regions of the abdominal pelvic cavity. You'll notice that we have a tic-tac-toe drawn here. And we have the umbilical region, which is where the, we have the belly button. This is the centermost region. The epigastric is the region superior or above the umbilical. The hypogastric is inferior to the umbilical area. We have both the right and left iliacs, which are located on either side of the hypogastric. The right and left lumbar regions are lateral to the umbilical and they correspond to the, the lower vertebrae of the body. The right and left hypochondriac regions are lateral to the epigastric and they uh, correspond to the location of the ribs. And finally, we will take those uh, nine regions of the abdominal cavity and we will show you in a diagram where each of the organs are located and what um, region is associated with each of the organs. Now do review over the anatomical directional terms at body planes and uh, just the, the regional and the uh, quadrants. Uh, this is a huge foundation for helping you to start off strong in uh, human anatomy and physiology class.